Hi everyone, I'm Nora. I'm going to show you how to crochet these chicks in eggshells for Easter. I've tried to make this as beginner friendly as possible, but if you've never crocheted before, I'd recommend you watch my earlier videos about how to do single crochet and how to crochet in the round. If you'd like the written version of this pattern, it's on my website. I'll leave the link in the description below. So you're going to need double knit yarn in orange, white and light yellow. You're going to need a 3mm crochet hook and a yarn needle, a stitch marker, some scissors and some stuffing. And you also need some black six millimeter safety eyes. So you can buy these just in packs uh, online, they're quite easy to get. And these are the backs that come with them. So you can see that they're like a screw. And I'll just show you the packet that I got with mine. They come in different sizes. I've had to label mine because they weren't labeled, but the ones on the end are six millimeter. And this is the pack of the backs that snap onto them. So we're going to start with the main piece. The head and the body is all one piece. So round one, we're going to make a magic ring. And we'll just pull that short tail out, put it to the side. And go underneath both of those and we'll do our six single crochet. So there's one, two, three, four, five. And six, and then you count the V's to count your stitches, and we'll pull on that short end, pull tight to close the magic ring. And then you lift up your slip knot to take your hook out, and we put our stitch marker in as we would do at the end of every round to mark the start of the new round. So, round two, we're going to increase in every stitch. And an increase is two single crochet in one stitch. So we will have 12 stitches at the end of this round. So there's one, and then another one in the same stitch. And we'll do this in every stitch around. And you can just pull on that short tail if the magic ring comes a bit loose at this point. So we take the stitch marker out and we do our last increase. And then we put it back in. So round three, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And we're going to do that six times. So we always do the part in brackets, the number of times stated, and we'll have 18 stitches at the end of this round. So we're increasing in multiples of six. So there's our first set.
And we take the marker out and do our last increase. So you can just count, make sure you've got 18. So round four, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches and we're going to increase in the next stitch and we're going to do that six times for a total of 24 stitches. So we're on our last set now. And we take out the marker and do our last increase. So rounds five to nine, that's five rounds, we're going to single crochet in every stitch. So we're not increasing or decreasing, we're just maintaining 24 stitches. So I'm going to show you all of round five. And then after that, you can pause the video and do the remaining four rounds. And then I'll meet you back. So I'll just show you this round. And you can see that it makes it start to curve around.
So you can count your rounds like this. And you can see the increases. They're quite easy to spot once you get used to what they look like. And then you can count the number of rounds after the increases. So I've done five rounds of single crochet now. And we can count as round one, two, three, four. And there's the last increase. And then there's one, two, three, four, five rounds of single crochet. So we'll just take that short tail out because we're going to put the safety eyes in now and we don't want it to get in the way. So we're going to insert these safety eyes between rounds five and six, about five stitches apart. So I'm going to show you how to use them. So first of all, we need to count our rounds to find the space between rounds five and six. So one, two, three, four, five. And there's six and that line in the middle is where we're going to put it. So at the base of the single crochet stitches. So they're like screws. So you might have to twist them to get them in and sort of push the fabric towards the back of it. So now we've got that in. Now we're going to count. So one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to place the other one still in between rounds five and six on that same line. Now, with these backs, we want the small end. So the end with the small hole goes on the screw part. So it goes like this. And because there are two parts of this screw, you want to snap it down until you hear a snap once. And that's on the first part of the screw. And you can see it's still sticking out a bit. So we want to snap it down again so that it's past the second part. So now that is on securely and I'm going to do exactly the same with the other eye. So the small hole and you can see those two bits sticking out there and we want to snap that past both of them. So just use two fingers to snap it down and then the second one. And then you can put that tail back in. So round 10, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches, and then we're going to do an invisible decrease and we're going to do that six times for a total of 18 stitches. So I'm going to show you how to do the invisible decrease. It is a way of decreasing which, like the name suggests, it's not meant to be very visible compared to doing a single crochet two together. So to do an invisible decrease, this loop here is the front loop because it's the closest to us. And this loop is the back loop because it's the furthest away. So we're going to be working in the front loops. So we pick up the front loop of the next stitch and then we turn our hook downwards and we pick up the front loop of the next stitch. Now we have three loops on our hook. Then we're going to yarn over and we're going to go through those two loops. So you can go through one first and then the second to make it easier. Now we have two loops on a hook and we yarn over and pull through both loops just like a normal single crochet. So you can see that it leaves a diagonal line and you want to be careful not to go into that and go into the underneath the V shape for the next stitch. So we'll do our two single crochet again. And I'll show you that 
invisible decrease again. So pick up both of those front loops, yarn over, go through both of those loops, yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And we just continue this until the end. So you can actually see the invisible decreases because there is a slight difference. They've got an extra bit at the base of them. So that's helpful when you need to count your stitches and count the number of single crochet in between the decreases. So we'll take the marker out when we've got two stitches remaining and we'll do our last invisible decrease. So we can just tuck that back in there if it keeps coming out. So round 11, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches. Then we're going to increase in the next stitch. And we're going to do that six times to increase back out to 24 stitches. So you can count your increases and the spaces. It really helps to be able to identify the increases and the decreases. And we take the marker out and do the last increase. So round 12, we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches and then increase in the next stitch six times until we have 30 stitches.
So we do our last increase. So rounds 13 to 20, that's eight rounds. We're going to single crochet in every stitch, maintaining 30 stitches. So you can pause the video and I'll meet you back at the end of those eight rounds. So I've done my eight rounds of single crochet. So you can count the decrease and then the two rounds of increase. And then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rounds of single crochet. Now we're going to stuff. So we take the stuffing and break it up into smaller bits and then push it all the way down into the head. And we want to stuff it fairly firmly. So now we're going to carry on and we're going to start decreasing. So round 21, we're going to single crochet in the next three stitches, then we're going to invisible decrease. We're going to do this six times for a total of 24 stitches. So we'll take the marker out when we've got two stitches remaining and do the last invisible decrease. So round 22, we're going to single crochet in the next two stitches and we're going to invisible decrease and we're going to do that six times for a total of 18 stitches.
So take the marker out and do the last invisible decrease. And then I'm going to add some more stuffing as I'm decreasing. And then round 23, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch, invisible decrease six times for a total of 12 stitches. So as this is getting smaller, it helps to put your finger in that hole because then you can, then it's easier to do your stitches and especially your invisible decrease stitches. Because then it won't collapse in on itself when you're trying to do it. So last invisible decrease. It's going to get a bit more fiddly the smaller it gets. So just put some more stuffing in. We want the bottom to squash a bit flat. So round 24, we're going to invisible decrease six times so that we just have six stitches remaining. And this is the last round. So you want to just keep your finger in that space. And make sure that you're going into the next stitch rather than the edge of the invisible decrease. And the last one. And now we're going to leave a tail about this long, so long enough to close that hole. And we're going to cut the yarn. And then we're going to fasten off. So to do that, it's like doing a chain, except we pull that all the way through. And we pull tight. And then we're going to thread that onto the needle. I'm going to come up from the front loops only from the outside like this. So the front loop of every stitch, so six stitches, and then we're going to pull tight to close the hole. So that gathers all the stitches together. Then we're going to find a loop nearby and we're going to not pull through all the way. We're going to leave a loop and then we're going to go through the back of that loop and pull tight. That creates a knot and that's how we fasten off. Then we're going to weave that through the middle of the magic ring and come out halfway through the body and then we're going to cut that close to the work and then use the end of our needle to hide that end. So now we're going to make the beak in orange and we're going to start with a magic ring.
and we're going to do four single crochet in the magic ring. So one, two, three, and four. Then we're going to close the magic ring. Put our marker in. And then for round two, we're going to single crochet in every stitch. So this is going to be more fiddly because there's only four stitches instead of six. But we're going to find that first stitch and single crochet. And then you can just push that out so that it's more, so that it's sticking out the way you want it to. And then we single crochet in the remaining three stitches. And the last one. And then we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. So to do this, you push the hook in the stitch, yarn over and pull through. And then we pull that loop through the first loop on the hook so we don't yarn over like we do with a single crochet. Then we're going to fasten off, leaving enough of a tail for sewing. And we're going to thread that tail onto our needle. But we're going to sew the beak onto the face by picking up loops from the yellow stitches and then going underneath both loops of the stitches on the last round of the beak. I'm going to sew it across two rounds. And then we're going to fasten off in the same way as we did on the body. And we're going to weave that through the inside of the body. And then we're also going to weave that tail from the magic ring inside the body. And then we'll trim those tails close to the edge of the work and use the end of our needle to hide those ends. So now we're going to make the wings. So we make two, both the same. So we make a magic ring. And we make six single crochet in the magic ring. Count the stitches and we pull tight to close the magic ring. 
and put our marker in. And then round two, we're going to increase in every stitch. So we have 12 stitches. So round three, we're going to single crochet in the next stitch and then increase in the next stitch six times for a total of 18 stitches. Round four, we're going to single crochet in every stitch, maintaining 18 stitches.
Now we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. So same as before, we pull that loop through the first loop on the hook. And then we're going to fasten off, leaving a tail for sewing. And then we're going to thread the tail from the magic ring onto the needle. And we need to weave this in to the back of the stitches. So they might be a bit fiddly because they're quite tight and small. But we'll just find loops from the back of those single crochet stitches and weave it in just for about four or five stitches. And then we cut the yarn close to the work. So we're going to thread the long tail onto the needle. And we're going to weave back through the inside of the stitch, through the back of the stitches in the opposite direction for about three stitches. Now we're going to take the body and we're going to sew it to the body. We're going to push it out from inside so it curves around. I'm going to line it up and we're going to sew it these three stitches going through both loops and we're going to go up around for each stitch until we get to the top where that decrease round is at the neck. And then when we get to the top we're going to start going down the next three stitches and going down on the rounds on the body. And we'll go through that slip stitch as well. So then we lift up the wing and we find a stitch, find a loop underneath to fasten off, pull tight, and then we weave in through the same space and cut the yarn. And we need to sew the other wing on in exactly the same way. So now we're going to make the hair on the top of his head or the feathers. So I'm going to measure 12 centimeters of yellow yarn. And I'm going to cut three of these, so three strands of 12 centimeter long yarn. Then we're going to push our hook through the middle of that magic ring. So you might need to twist it and um, to get it in there. And we're going to come out through the space on the next round. We're going to fold the yarn in half. We're going to fold the strand in half so that the ends meet. And then we're going to put that onto the hook and pull that loop through the stitch. And then we're going to wrap those ends around the hook and pull through the loop and pull tight. And then we're going to go through that same space. I'm going to come out at the other side. And we're going to attach all three of these in exactly the same way. So we pull through, wrap those ends around the hook and pull through. And then we do another one coming out at the front. And then we're going to line all of them up and we're going to trim it so that it's one and a half centimeters long. So 
So now we're going to make the feet and we're going to take the orange yarn and we're going to cut it so that it's 30 centimeters long. Then we'll thread that onto the needle. I'm going to come up through this point and just go round the width of one round. Don't pull through all the way and tie these ends in a knot just once, pull tight. Then we're going to make three diagonal lines. So we're going to come up to about two rounds above. I'm going to go back through the same point and then one in the stitch right next to that. And again, go back through the same point and pull. And then one more coming out through the same point again. And then we're going to go through that same point and weave through to the opposite side to do the other foot in the same way. Always going back through that same point that we came out of. And then we're going to fasten off by finding a yellow loop and don't pull through all the way. You want to make sure that you leave a loop and go through the back of the loop and pull tight to make a knot. And then weave through. And, and then we're going to weave that short tail through the body as well. Just going through the same point. And then we'll trim those ends and use the end of the needle to hide them. So now we're going to make the eggshell. So this pattern works in the same way as the same of, as what we've done for the body. So we increase in multiples of six, and then we do a certain number of rounds of single crochet. So I'm going to leave the instructions on the screen for this section, and then I'll meet you back to do the shell edging. So this is what it will look like once you've done this part. So round 11, we're going to slip stitch in the next stitch. Then we're going to half double crochet in the next stitch. So we yarn over, push the hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. Now we have three loops on the hook. Then we yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Now we're going to double crochet in the next stitch. So we yarn over, push through the stitch, yarn over, pull through. Now we have three loops. Yarn over and pull through two loops. Now we have two. Yarn over and pull through two loops. So that's a double crochet. Now in the same stitch, we're going to do a treble. So we wrap the yarn around the hook twice, and then we push into that same space, and then we yarn over, and pull through. Now we have four loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops. Now we have three loops. Yarn over and pull through the next two loops. Now we have two loops. Yarn over and pull through the last two loops. So there's three sets of pulling through two loops on the hook. So there's the treble. Now in that same space again, we're going to do another, another double crochet. So yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through two loops, yarn over and pull through two. So we've now got three stitches in the same stitch and this is what's going to create our up and down stitch.
So now we want to half double crochet in the next stitch. So yarn over into the stitch, yarn over and pull through. Then yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. Now in the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch. And that section in brackets, which is what we've just done, we're going to repeat this all the way around. So for the next set, slip stitch in the next stitch, half double crochet in the next stitch, double crochet in the next stitch, And then treble in the same stitch. And then double crochet in the same stitch. Half double crochet in the next stitch. Slip stitch in the next stitch. So now we've done two sets. And we want to do that all the way around until we get to the last set and you've got one stitch remaining. So you can pause the video and I'll meet you back. So I've done all of my sets, all of my clusters now. And I've done the last slip stitch of that last set. And now we're going to take the marker out and slip stitch in the last stitch. Now we're going to cut the yarn, leaving a tail to weave that in. And fasten off. Thread the tail onto our needle. And then we're going to weave this in. So just go down through that loop. And then we'll weave through the back of the stitches on the single crochet round. Just for about five stitches and then to make it more secure, you can go down to the next round and weave in the opposite direction. And then we trim that tail close to the edge of the work. And just reshape it. And now all that's left to do is put our chick in our shell. So he sits in there nicely. Should be quite a snug fit and then the base should be you can squash it down to make the base flatter and he should sit up by himself so you can make another chick if you'd like like i have i hope you've enjoyed this tutorial if you'd like to share a photo with me of your chicks i'd love to see it you can tag me on instagram at laura underscore wilson zero one if you'd like to check out my etsy shop i design and sell crochet patterns my shop is called Laura Wilson Designs. I'll leave the link in the description below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in my next video.